We have two old regions that are rotating into Earth view and they're boosting the solar flux. And it looks like a stealthy solar storm has been launched and it's headed towards Earth. How will these things affect you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week is definitely picking up. You can see regions 2740 and 2741. They've survived their backside passage and they're rotating back into Earth view. And as they come into view, up goes that solar flux. We are now back into the marginal range for radio propagation, which should make amateur radio and emergency responders quite happy. Now, these regions aren't the powerhouses that we had the last time we saw them, so they're not firing constantly solar storms, but they have have managed to launch what looks to be a stealthy solar storm at Earth. It's moving awfully slowly, so it may not give us all that much. But between that launch and the coronal holes that are straddling this region and the fast wind that we expect from them, boy, it's sure going to be a bumpy ride over this next week as these regions continue to rotate across the Earth-facing disk. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see, we are still incredibly flatlined when it comes to the X-ray flux, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux continues to be low. And even as the old region 2740 and 41 have rotated into Earth view, well, can you tell? It's the rise is very, very slow. But it does mean that we do have a little bit of a boost to the solar flux. We are barely in the marginal range for radio propagation right now, which is better than what we had, but it's just not all that much. In fact, these regions this time around are so weak that they haven't even been considered sunspots anymore, so our sun is still considered spotless. But we will take it. I mean, we're at solar minimum, right? Any bright region is a good bright region. So enjoy this low end of marginal radio propagation over the next week before these regions begin to kind of disappear on the sun's west limb. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been hovering pretty much between quiet conditions and unsettled conditions over the past week or so. Right around the 29th, we actually did get hit by a stealthy solar storm, and it managed to bump us up to active conditions for a very short while and brought a little bit of aurora, but it sure didn't last all that long before things kind of tapered back down to quiet conditions. And we've been kind of just sitting around quiet to barely unsettled conditions over the past couple days since then. But we do have another stealthy solar storm that's on its way, and it could hit us right about the 8th, but it most likely will bump us only to about unsettled conditions again, and most likely will not be an aurora producer. And as I promised last week, I have more gorgeous aurora photos to show from those huge solar storms that hit Earth the last time these regions were in view. So here's a gorgeous shot from Scotland. And as we travel over the pond, we saw aurora in Iceland. And as we go to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen all over Canada. Here's some gorgeous shots from Ontario, Canada. And it was seen in Manitoba. We had aurora in Saskatchewan. And it was all over Alberta. And as we drop into the United States, Aurora was seen in North Dakota and in Michigan. And it even made it down to the Wyoming, Colorado border. And as we go down under, Aurora was seen all over New Zealand. And it was also seen in Tasmania. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side anymore. And you can see regions 2740 and 2741 as they rotate to the sun's west limb in Stereo's view. These are the regions that have now rotated into Earth view and have boosted the solar flux. But as you can tell, they're not really as active as they were last time we saw them during the last rotation. They have fired off a stealthy solar storm that's headed towards Earth, but we really just don't see the big powerhouses that they used to be. Nonetheless, we do have a coronal hole that is behind that last region there. And between that and another one, it's kind of like there's a coronal hole sandwich. So expect the next week of, of space weather to be a bit 
bumpy because this is going to give us some disturbed solar wind along with that stealthy solar storm and that could keep us at unsettled conditions but then as we look past that boy everything sure gets quiet fast so once these regions rotate out of earth view off of the sun's earth facing limb then we're going to probably go right back to a solar minimum sun and everything's going to get very very quiet Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we're kind of looking at a bit of a bumpy ride this week. Nothing's going to be too intense, but we do have a bit of activity going on. First, we're going to get hit by a little pocket of fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's kind of rotating in through the Earth's strike zone right now. At high latitudes, no one's expecting unsettled conditions, but up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting normal to unsettled conditions, but we have up to about a 25% chance of active conditions and even a small chance of a minor storm, although I doubt that will happen. Then things will quiet down, but then we have to deal with this stealthy solar storm that's going to be hitting us right around the 8th, and that could bump us back up to unsettled conditions with, you know, maybe another chance for active conditions for a very short while. And then after that, things will settle down just a little bit more, and we might even get some fast wind after all. After that, because of the coronal whole sandwich that we're kind of dealing with with these bright regions in the middle almost like an oreo right you got the dark coronal hole and the bright chewy center i, I don't know it's just I'm, I'm maybe i'm hungry anyway enjoy this kind of unsettled activity over this next week because once these regions rotate out of earth view the space weather is going to get extremely quiet once again Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. Even though we have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, they are not strong enough to be considered sunspots and they don't get a number. So the sun is still spotless. Now this is good news for you GPS users because we don't have any risk for radio blackouts or big solar flares on Earth's day side. So your reception should be really good. But we do expect that these regions are going to continue to boost the solar flux. We are back into the low 70s for solar flux, which means we are back at the low end of marginal for radio propagation. And these conditions will continue easily over the next week. Now, also because we are at a solar minimum sun, the cosmic ray flux is penetrating a bit further than we would normally have it. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly at 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picked up compared to last week. We do have old regions 2740 and 2741 that have rotated into Earth view, but they're definitely not the powerhouses that we saw the last time they came around. As a matter of fact, they aren't even considered sunspots anymore, just bright regions. So don't expect a lot of uh, boost in the solar flux, just enough to get us at marginal range for radio propagation. But hey, that's not too bad considering we're at solar minimum. So Amateur radio operators and emergency responders definitely enjoy a little bit of brightness to your day and expect these conditions to last probably over the next week before things begin to tank again. Now, we also have a, a stealthy solar storm that's on its way to Earth that could hit us right around the 8th, and along with kind of some small pockets of fast solar wind, we sure could be in for a bit of a bumpy ride. So aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you guys could get some sporadic erratic aurora over the next couple days and possibly over the next week kind of on and off but mid-latitude photographers well you might have to sit this one out because these solar minimum storms are sure weak and probably not going to give you much of a show now you gps users on the you guys on the other hand are really in luck because these really weak storms actually help stabilize that upper atmosphere for you even at low latitudes so your gps reception pretty much all over the globe looks really nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.